Let's take a look at the last 60 days since the start of summer, June the 1st, and we can look at the, the overall temperature anomalies. And what's noticeable is along the West Coast, there, especially there in California, they're experiencing some kind of really <laughs> cool summers. In fact, San Francisco is experiencing one of the coolest summers they've seen on record. Average high temperature is 67 degrees currently. Uh, for the last 60 days. But if you move inland, that's where you've seen a noticeable uptick in some of those temperature anomalies where they have seen slightly above average temperatures across the desert southwest, a good part of the Pacific Northwest and in the interior regions across the Dakotas. But further south, the, really the standout has been much of the central plains has been average to even some areas below average. They've seen an abundance amount of rain down there and many areas haven't even actually touched the 100 degree mark as of yet. But further north, we have seen those above average temperatures and where it's been the most above normal is and in the mid-Atlantic mid as well as into the northeast. But as far as the precipitation goes over the last 60 days, Notice the noticeable dry spot. Yeah, it's been really dry in the Pacific Northwest. This is a, a, a precipitation anomaly for the last 60 days. And the green is only like a quarter inch for 60 days. That's hardly anything. Blue is like a half inch. So there hadn't been too much of anything. Now, of course, we've had a lot of flash flooding events, but they have been somewhat isolated. There's definitely been pockets have seen extreme amount of rainfall, especially those areas into Florida, along the coast, coast here where they've seen you know wave after wave of these tropical lows of course we had the devastating floods down there in central texas and there's been definitely pockets in missouri and iowa been crushed lately with a lot of heavy rain but there's also been dry pockets as well noticeable dry slot here another dry slot here so there's definitely some areas that just kind of missed out of most of the rain altogether but look at the trend so we've been in this end zone neutral if you recall uh, last year, we were in that weak La Nina, right? So when then we flipped into Enzo neutral back in March, and we've been in that Enzo neutral, and that's predominantly why most of the middle part of the country has been on that kind of the overall average side. But notice the noticeable trend over the last couple of weeks. We're definitely starting to see a trend favoring going eventually heading back into that weak La Nina criteria. Now, of course, we're already there typically, but you got to have like three consecutive months below negative five to actually qualify. And I do feel that trend will continue as we go into September and then likely be qualified as a weak La Nina again by the time we start the month of October. But look at the transition on the overall sea surface temperature anomalies out there into the equatorial Pacific. A lot more blues starting to show up on the map. That's those cooler waters. But notice further north, look at the bullseye. Yep, there were this blob, right? Notice a noticeable blob in the, in the warm NPO. That is your North Pacific Oscillation. And that's one of the reasons why we've seen just an abundance amount of tornadoes as we're going on to more or less a record year. We've already seen 13, 1400 tornadoes. Last year we had 1900. So we're definitely actually on pace to even eclipse that. Even last year was a record year. So I do feel the severe threat will likely be continued to remain active, especially as we head towards those fall months and get that second half of storm season. But overall, as we head into the month of August, we are going to see a little bit of a, a reprieve in the the heat that's been prominent over at least the northern interior and seeing a quick change in temperature. So where you've actually had the, the, the above average temperature so far, you're going to be getting a cool down up there into most of the Pacific Northwest, across the northern interior of Montana, back through the middle part of the country in the northern plains, as well as into the Ohio Valley and into the northeast overall for the first week of August. And notice where areas have been somewhat on the cooler side there into portions of Texas you're going to be getting you know those areas above above average but that won't last long because we are in the month of August and typically that is the hottest part of summer and that's what exactly likely what's going to play out as we get deeper into August because this is your second week of August the drastic flip the little reprieve a little cool down that we're going to be getting it's not going to last long 
unfortunately, as the ridge of high pressure will be dominating, coming back with a vengeance, again, with a lot of sinking air coming back in the picture, that's what we're seeing on the precipitation anomalies as the drying trend continues. Now, you'll get some rain, but it's still going to be overall below average for a good part of the southern states as well as in the desert southwest you're still not likely going to get much rain at all in the pacific northwest and where it has been active it's going to continue to remain active especially with the ridge dominating back again and but it's only going to be going so far north so that means the weakness of the ridge will be lining up yet again for that first half of august through montana back into the dakotas where they've seen abundance amount of storms back through south dakota iowa back into illinois and there's also another highlighted feature too because we're going to be definitely seeing these little tropical lobes kind of spinning around in a merry-go-round and we'll be seeing more of these it's spinning off in and adding to those higher above average uh, precipitation anomalies into the Carolinas as well as into portions of Georgia. So if we move the needle and take a look at the overall big picture for the month of August, no surprise really, right? Hot is hot, hot, you know, August is the hottest time of the year. And yeah, we're definitely gonna see a dominating ridge of high pressure baking the deep south, much of the southeast, much of the desert southwest, the only weakness, like I mentioned, is going to be open over the ridge. So, yes, we saw that confirmed duration last night up there in South Dakota and Iowa. We could be looking at more similar setups like that because the pattern does favor uh, kind of that favor that same areas over and over and over again as we get into the, the month of August. So let's take a look at the tropics, right? It has been quiet. We've had three named storms. In fact, with only three named storms, and those three didn't even last long. They were named storms less than 24 hours. And so we've had a, a, a slow start this season, and I do feel that slow start is going to continue because if you look at the latest update over the next 30 to 40 days, wow, folks, that is just an extreme amount of sinking air in the atlantic basin it's going to be very difficult for stuff to form even if it does it's not going to hold on for very long because it's going to be ripped apart and a lot of sinking air in that that neck of the woods but what you see is is look at all the blues and the greens showing up in the pacific that is the complete opposite pattern what you're getting in the atlantic basin and that's why most of the pacific has been on fire right yet where even right now we're already up to the i name storm iona that's a that's a major hurricane south of hawaii right now 125 miles an hour and just on its tails we got the k name storm and then we have yet even the potentially the l name storm and even going in the m name so yeah it's been very active and i do feel it's going to continue to remain active at least on the Pacific side, at least through the month of August. So as we make that trend, and I do feel we're going to be starting to continue on that drier trend. I know you had a ton of rain in portions of Texas and Oklahoma to start the start uh, summer and uh, well into the spring months, but I don't really see too much rain going forward. I think by the time we head into August, especially with that ridge of high pressure dominating coming back, we're going to be seeing an uptick in above normal activity with wildfires yet again back into Texas and Oklahoma. And it's going to continue to remain on the above average side with the drying trend continuing for the Pacific Northwest. I think we're up to almost 40,000 individual wildfires for the year so far. And that equates to about 3 million acres burned. So unfortunately, I think that just deepens and gets a little bit worse heading into the month of August. But the trend is there, folks. We are likely, and in fact, I am forecasting, heading back into a weak La Nina, kind of like we did last year. We made that transition in the month of August, actually, to that weak La Nina. This one's going to be a little bit delayed this year, but we, I think we still go back into that weak La Nina, similar like we did last year. And, but also i do feel it's not really going to last long it's maybe last four five six months tops at best and then i think we're going to be trending back into that enzo neutral pattern again by the time we head into that spring of 2026. 
So if we take a look at September, and I do feel things are going to be drastically turning around in a big way, especially out there in the Atlantic. Of course, the pattern's not going to stay that way forever. And it's typically once we get after Labor Day, it's like 62% of the season. So it's not like it's that unusual to start. In fact, the last two years didn't really start off gangbusters, but definitely ended on the busier note. And it looks to be that same general trend this year as a, as the pattern flips with a ton of upward, upward rising motion air coming back into the Atlantic. It's going to be a lot easier to produce showers and thunderstorms to kind of get them to congeal, congeal together and form into a, a low level circulation and take some named storms and possibly even some some hurricanes and some major hurricanes i do feel the trend will be a major uptick especially as we head into after labor day in september even as well as into october so the overall typical la nina kind of looks like this we, we've seen a ton of la ninas over the last 10 years it does in favor a less active subtropical jet stream and with that it definitely favors the drying trend continues unfortunately for the desert southwest but it also amps up again for much of texas and oklahoma and the southern plains and even portions of the southeast those warmer anomalies come back overall and then of course you'll have some wet zones as well and with the jet stream lifting pretty far north definitely wetness comes back in, in a big way for the Pacific Northwest. And eventually by the time we hit the winter months, we'll definitely be on the cooler side and look for Northwest flow and these cool shot, colder you know, shots of air coming back in the picture. But that trend is going to flip for you guys in the Pacific Northwest, but it won't be in August. It will likely be in the month of September and especially there in October. But between now and then heading into that month of September, I do feel the upward tick in temperatures is going to continue. So those two, three, four degrees above average temperature anomalies for a good part of the northern and central plains is likely to continue. And then about a one to two degrees above average temperatures for most of the country so i do feel october uh, september is going to be above average for a good part and that trend would likely be trending into october as well as we head into that say first month of fall there as as those temperatures will continue to remain on the above average side as that la nina likely kicks in at least the weaker version of itself but i also feel as we head into the month of october i do feel we'll continue to be overall on the drier side and of course october is your wettest month so even though you see brown doesn't mean it's not going to rain by any stretch of the imagination it just means the overall data is favoring below average what you would typically see in a very wet month of august but what's noticeable is the wetness that comes back for the pacific northwest and that's why it's going to be taking that trend back again what you typically see in a la nina type setup with the rains coming back with the vengeance for a good part of the pacific northwest and then you continue to remain on the wetter side for those areas across the tennessee valley much of the uh, ohio valley mid-atlantic and even into the the northeast so guys i appreciate you watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update wire protect you before and after storm